I do it. Now I suppose we gotta do a show, huh? <laughs> Let me tell you something. The oddest thing just happened to me. Seriously. Standing behind that curtain, I was seized with this overwhelming urge to vote. <laughs> Are you as glad as I am that those damn elections yes. are over? <laughs> One more of those political commercials and I wouldn't have voted for anybody. <laughs> I think we should bring in capital punishment the next time they run those ads. <laughs> How many of you watched the news last night where they tried to make the results exciting? Yeah. <laughs> CBS started like at five o'clock in the afternoon. By eight o'clock, everybody was all over. Yeah. And poor Dan Rather tried to give you the idea that it was just exciting as could be for four hours. <laughs> and in desperation last night at eight o'clock, Dan Rather projected that Raul Montagna <laughs> would be the new McDonald's employee of the month. <laughs> I'm telling you. A few surprises. A great day for the Democrats. I mean, I'm not I, I don't take political side. The real Republicans lost both houses. Yeah. Big deal. I lost three. <laughs> <laughs> what am I laughing at? <laughs> well, you got to keep your sense. Uh, Republicans, as you know, lost their majority in the Senate. Yeah, Reagan has not seen so many vacated seats since they used to play his movies. <laughs> well, hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm too old to be drafted. What's the deal? <laughs> now, the president has two more years in office. Now he has no control of the Senate or the House. That makes him what they call a lame duck president. Now, do you know what a lame duck president really means? That means in the next two years, George Bush will tell Ronnie to get his own coffee in Danish. <laughs> a lame duck. Um, of course, there were elections all over the country in lots of states. I understand here in California that Tom Bradley and the California Angels have a time-sharing plan on a case of champagne. <laughs> it's a boomer. <laughs> The suspense is mounting. Everybody is now waiting for the California Governor Duke Majin to make the big appointment. Chief Justice Joseph Wapner to the California Supreme Court. <laughs> now, the big race out in California was uh, Ed Shaw versus Senator Alan Cranston, who's had about five terms as a senator, and then Cranston got it. And, and Shaw, is that pronouncing it correct? Yes. Ed as they said in the commercials, Shao. <laughs> it's a weird name, Shao. It's something that Vanna White would spell while drunk. Here in California, uh, English was voted the official language of California. But they had to print the ballot in Spanish so the voters could read it. <laughs> True! Come on! <laughs> right? No, I... I don't know what the hell that law means. What are you gonna do? You're walking down the street, you're speaking Spanish, they revoke your tonsils? <laughs> English is the official language. What's, what's the difference? It, you know what it does? It makes the soundtracks of all uh, Sylvester Stallone movies illegal. <laughs> Look, no, no, I'm telling you, California is a weird state. For example, well, I'll tell you. Oh, uh, the, gabar the garbanzo bean was <laughs> voted the silliest salad bar ingredient. <laughs> Didn't you know the cherry tomato uh, conceded this morning? Wally George, you know the name? Beat out the macadamia as the state nut. <laughs> We're talking. We have... I'm telling you, folks, in California, they have some weird propositions 
on the ballot. Did you, did you vote Proposition yes. G? What was that? Was defeated. It would have made it illegal to make quiche into shapes that would arouse your prurient interest. <laughs> Uh, Proposition Z, soundly, soundly beaten. Z would have made it a crime to watch Gilligan's Island in colorization. <laughs> Proposition, I got more of these. <laughs> Proposition 36, that one easily. Yeah. That would declare airline food to be a deadly weapon. <laughs> I voted, and I'm sure you did, for Proposition O. It puts a ceiling of 200 on the number of talk shows from Los Angeles. <laughs> 200. Uh, the president got some criticism. How many of you got a telephone call? A pre-recorded telephone call from President Reagan? He got criticized. He made it a pre-recorded call. He just called numbers at random, and it was a record. And they said, hi, this is Ronald Reagan. I'm taking a nap now, but when you hear the beep... <laughs> vote Republican, and he got criticized for that. It was so easy for him that I understand that he's going to pre-record his last two years in office and just go directly to the ranch. <laughs> anyway, so we got a good shot. I was, I was out of town for a while. How'd the Red Sox do? <laughs> Sorry I brought that up. Anyway. Tonight, we've got, a, we've got a real good show for you tonight. Mr. Burt Reynolds is with us. A very inventive, troubled comedian. All comedians are troubled. Dick Sean is with us tonight. And a lovely girl whom I have not met. She is a, a, a Chinese actress, very pretty. She's rather tall, has been in a number of movies. Her name is, is Shakti, and she will be with us later. And uh, whatever. So thanks for coming. We'll be right back. And I promise this great country. Wow. Wait, ooh, it was enough of that. You ever seen such negative campaigning oh, in your life? Dirtiest campaign I ever remember. People are accused of each other of treason, right. you know, <laughs> kicking their mother, you know, right. killing, running over Lassie with a pickup. I mean, uh, <laughs> nobody talks oh. anymore about the issues. No. They simply just, this man is for toxic drinking water to kill your children. I mean, mm. gee. And they spent, you know what they spent on the election here in, in Southern California for the Senate between Cranston and Ed Shaw? Twenty and a half million dollars. Just in that, that's a, lo a local, mm. a statewide yeah. campaign. It worked out to three dollars and seventy-five cents per voter. How many would like the three seventy-five back? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. That's big bucks. Big bucks. It costs a lot of money to run for political office, and somewhere along the line, I shouldn't get political, but they've got to set a limit on what people can spend. It's just crazy. It's yeah. just crazy. I think in England sometimes there's a, there's a period of electioneering, something like six or eight weeks before the campaign. That's it. Mm -hmm. They do six or eight weeks, and it's over. Here we do it for a whole year, yeah. and you get so confused, you don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, welcome back. What did Thank you, you do this uh, time off? I was just on my boat, just <clears throat> tooling yacht, around. Yacht, yacht, yacht. Part of my yacht, or you call it a yacht. I was on the yacht. I went down to Long Beach. Ooh. Oh, what a big trip. What That's a, a big trip. trip for me, yes. <laughs> you went from Marina Del Way to Long Beach? All the way down to Long Beach. Wow. Magellan, Magellan would be so proud of you. <laughs> you know I have I a good spirit. Out on the old storm-tossed seas, <laughs> That's huh? right. <laughs> <laughs> Marina Del Rey to Long Beach. What is that, a mile and a half? <laughs> Two and a half hour trip. It's Two and a, a half hour trip. trip. We only That's go nine knots. Well, what difference does it make? It didn't was you, fun. You piloted the boat? Absolutely. Yourself? Yes. You didn't have a captain? Oh, I have a captain. So you had a captain yeah. to go... <laughs> 
Magellan, I mean, I he would go out be... there by myself. It's wet out there. Wow. Mm. Well, luckily you didn't hit bad weather. No, that's I mean, right. <laughs> now, what did you do? Well, are you about, what, 50, 60 feet offshore all the time? Just... No, 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 way offshore. What did you do? What's the longest trip you've taken in this boat? I went to Catalina. That's 20 miles. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go to Hawaii? You I don't to, have time to go to Hawaii. You can't leave, I suppose, on radar. I mean, you're 20. You can see Catalina. Hours. You can see Catalina That's from right. the coast. Anyway, I, don't, I kid you. Yeah, I know. You kid me. What, did, what I did, I did you do? I watched you driving down to Catalina. <laughs> I stood up and I had the binocs I, out. I, 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 I stood up at Point Doom in Malibu, saying, "Look at that boat down there going clear to Long Beach." <laughs> What a thrilling trip. I suppose you went by celestial navigation. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, I did. <laughs> no, don't make a trip that, that way at night. No. That's really dangerous. No. <laughs> anyway, <So bad>. we, were, <laughs> we were off for a week, and uh, it, it probably was just as well because w this show was preempted, which means we were not seen in many parts of the country several nights during the World Series. Mm -hmm. We were preempted last night because of the election coverage. Nevertheless, we had to do a show each one of those nights. Because if, if the uh, World Series had ended earlier, the game right. hadn't gone long, we'd had to be prepared to go on. And as often the case, some of those shows are the best shows... Yeah, not funny how that works out? ...we on? have ever yeah. done in our life. It's amazing. It always works out. And you missed, really, some of the great moments yeah. we had, I guess, for the past decade. Yeah. <laughs> It's a shame, too. Now, what I wanted to do, I wanted to pull some of those excerpts out from those tapes, but we couldn't do it because financially, if we show one minute out of any one of those shows, we have to pay everybody, including all of the crew, the musicians, all of, mm -hmm. whether they appear on the show or not. And it's prohibitively expensive. But there's nothing to prevent me from telling you about some of the things. Yeah. <laughs> except your disinterest, of course. <clears throat> Let me show you, let me tell you some of the things that you were actually did that we have on tape we couldn't show you. Uh, White House Chief of Staff Donald Reagan walked on carrying the America's Cup and made everyone in the audience fill it up. <laughs> I know, it sounds crude, but the Harlem Globetrotters were on the show with Reverend Pat Robertson. And they did slam dunks through his halo. <laughs> you didn't miss that. Jane Fonda made a rare appearance on this show. During we were preempted. Jane weighs 240 pounds, <laughs> and revealed that it's not really her on those workout tapes. It's actually Richard Simmons in a wig and a push-up bra. <laughs> If only we could have shown Showman, these things. Yeah. Imelda Marcos came out dressed as a lumberjack, <laughs> chopped down a redwood, and made 147,000 shoe trees. <laughs> you, all, you know Mary Hart from Entertainment Tonight? Mm -hmm. She was here, broke down. You'll remember this. Yeah and admitted she is able to smile for the entire half hour by sitting on Mary Lou Retton's supercharged battery. <laughs> the entire... This was a real coup for the show. The entire Nicaraguan Contra Army came on... <laughs> on our stage... <laughs> and announced they're only fighting because they heard Bristol Myers plans to take the miracle whitening crystals out of new blue cheer. <laughs> A wordy joke, but it sounds nice. <laughs> Lee Iacocca. Yeah. Confessed that for years he's been mistreating his next-door neighbor's fat son by forcing him to ride in his car as an airbag. <laughs> How many of you know Columnist George Will. Conservative columnist George Will showed up and claimed he does not wear a bow tie, but it's actually a clip-on Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> Michael J. Fox. No. Yes. Was here. Mm. <laughs> Hiked to the top of Lonnie Anderson and sang Little Sir Echo into her cleavage. <laughs> Thank you.
One night, Doc was out ill. This is hard to believe. Yes. Pope John Paul II <laughs> came in and led the band. <laughs> Lest you do not believe me, he left this behind. <laughs> And also, you know how you kick off the right. band? Yes. This was his cue card to kick off the band. <laughs> Unos duo tres. <laughs> what a night that was. Two props. Two props. <laughs> Pope is coming here next year. Did you see yes. that? You're going to make 39 speeches. Eight, eight cities in eight, eight days. 39 major speeches, yeah. though. Mm. How do you do that? OK. What? You talk like this. You talk very fast, yes. And he talks in many languages, right? Yes. Okay, Sir Francis Drake. <laughs> We're going to Long Beach. <laughs> okay, yes, I know, Fred. We got to run along. We have a big show here. A new sponsor. With dignity, let us welcome Magnavox, makers of the universal remote for virtually any TV, VCR, and cable system. My, uh... First guest tonight needs no uh, big introduction. He is uh, one of the most, if not the most popular movie star in the world and a good friend. He's just finished two movies. Bert's busy. One of them is called Heat. The other is called Malone. And he'll soon be starring in a third. Do you have these two out yet? And he's already working on another one? Right. Oh, me. It's called Rent-A-Cop. <laughs> he came here tonight. He's actually filming a movie while he's here tonight. <laughs> Uh, would you welcome Mr. Burt Reynolds? Is it that nice? Now, before we, we start anything, unless you want to say something first. Not a thing. <laughs> you remember about 10, 12, 14 years ago. How long ago when you did the Cosmopolitan, the, the famous Cosmopolitan? 35 years ago. <laughs> you see, was, I knew uh, you were going to say something. It was Paul. 1973. 1973. Yeah. And things really broke wide open for I you. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Things broke wide open for your career. Yeah. You brought that, we showed it that night, and you were posed with your hand strategically placed, arm, arm strategically <laughs> placed. <laughs> I stand, excuse me. Your arm <clears throat> strategically placed, right? And I said at the time, well, that's very nice, but if I had to pose for that picture, I would have had to wear a catcher's mitt. Do you remember that? <laughs> I mean, jokingly. You, next time you came on the show, and I've had this. <laughs> I've had this picture in my office all those years, wanting you to sign. Let me show you. This is true. This is what he came back with and presented me on the show. Me. <laughs> pasted my head on your body with a catcher's mitt. Very nice. I, and I, I, I want you to, later on, I want you to, to sign this for me. I'd love to sign it. I, I'll, I'll sign the mitt. What? <laughs> Was that 73? 73. My God. 14 years ago. <clears throat> Fortunately, I've had surgery on the body and it's remained exactly the same. You stay in good shape, don't you? I work out every day. Do you really? No. <laughs> it's going to be one of these kind of nights with you, huh? <laughs> but you do. Come on. Because last time you were here, you were practically uh, traumatized because you just turned 50. Mm -hmm. And you were completely uh, upset about this. Well, just a little bit. You call it a midlife crisis? I don't know how it well, could I, be, I, how many people live to be 100, you know, so, <laughs> you see, that's halfway between, <laughs> guys are 50, they always say it's midlife, and it's really more than, 40 is about midlife. Am yeah. I talking too much? <laughs> no, I, I, You want to jump in here any place sure, you want, sure. I mean. No, I didn't think about it as a midlife crisis, actually. I am, I am watching for liver spots every day. 
But uh, I don't worry about that kind of stuff. Really? No, I don't think so. I think when you get a, you start panicking and buy yourself a Corvette or a sports car, you're getting a little panicky. You know. <laughs> You know, you're probably right. That's probably one of the reasons I bought the Corvette, subconsciously, to be younger. Well, but I haven't. It's but very I haven't, nice of you to admit that. But I haven't gone to red suede jackets and uh, that that's kind true. of stuff yet. <laughs> you know, when you start wearing dead animals, why? Yeah. Dead animals. You know uh, Marco Polo here? Yes, I do. <laughs> what a cruise! What a cruise! Huh? The love boat will be going next time. That's right. They, they lost four men and they chopped the sea. <laughs> You've only been here a couple of minutes. I've been doing all the talking, and I have to stop and sell something. So well, please, I'll sell it for you. What for, is it? Well, it, is this a new uh, new sponsor? Well, Let me this, see. We see it's on the teleprompter. <laughs> just, just Niblet's corn. I eat it every day. And during the break, you went and saw Ross and... Uh, at, uh, and Connie. At, at, and Connie at, at Dante's? Yeah, they were sensational. Did you ever it's... want to play in a big band? Did you ever yeah. have an urge to play an instrument in a big band? I would band? like to do anything musical. Yeah. Because I've done two musicals and... Boy. Well, now, you did the uh, Peter yeah. Bogdanovich uh, yeah. at Long Last yeah. Love. Yes, they, they, they play that on airplanes and people go right out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no parachute and everything. Just... <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't your happiest experience? No, huh? I had a good time. Yeah. What did I know? Yeah. And then I did a film called uh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Right. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. And I had a great time on that. Yeah. And uh, it, it made a lot of money, but it, uh, the critics didn't like it. Well, what the critics like sometimes doesn't is always yes. important. It is personally, I suppose. I always felt if you, those that can't teach and those that can't do either, review. <laughs> That's what I feel, and I'll pay for that. No. <laughs> You, what do I care? You like to bait them like that. You turned like down, them. now you did Cannonball 1. You made yeah. Cannonball 2. Yeah. I understand you passed on... I turned down Cannonball, cannonball 3. So, thank you. <laughs> we want that man's name and yes. address. That's right. It's probably an out-of-work actor that wants the job. Yeah. Uh, I you, turned it down as a sign of maturity, I thought. I turned oh. that down. And I recommended, they said, who do you think yeah, would I'm, do it? I was going to ask. I thought uh, Mario Andretti. He looks good. He drives good. Yeah. That's all it requires. Just a good-looking driver. Yeah. Because you can't act too much in a car seat, you know. Nothing you can do. You can't move they, around. Now, will they go ahead and make it anyway if you don't do it? I, I Sure, why not? I mean, wh what difference would I make? Well, because you've made the difference. You're Burt Reynolds. You're not going to get Harry uh, Bimbo to play. Who, who cares? Harry Bimbo would be good, actually. <laughs> so you just passed on that. Huh? I passed on that. And let's uh, see, what else did I do that's mature? You know what I thought? I saw you on cable again the other the last week. Maybe I said this last time you're here. Deliverance. Yeah. You are very. You are, that was a great picture. I mean that. Yeah. That was a good, good, solid picture. That was a lot of fun to make that. Picture. Yeah. Scary picture. Un unsettling, but well yeah. done. Interesting man. He uh, uh, he thought if you had a James uh, James Dickey. Well, right, James right. Dickey was yeah. He's very interesting too. But the character I played was a guy that if you didn't have a gun rack in your house. You were a fairy. <laughs> naughty naughty Pine Den and yeah. a flag in the corner. Very and a... strange guy. Yeah. The no. other thing that I've done that's very mature is I'm still in a relationship with the same woman for over... Well, you see, now, I'm, I'm reluctant to ask something like that because I, I feel like a, one of those Hollywood uh, reporters or something for a tabloid, and I hate to come out because I've known you a long time. But I hate to say, Bert, how's your relationship with the... With Lonnie, it sounds, you know, first of all, it's none of my business, and you... And Don't you ask me, though. How are you getting along with Lonnie? <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's one of your longer relationships, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's over uh, five years now, uh -huh. which is a, a record for me. Yes. That anybody can put up with me that long is amazing. And uh, I think it's a sign of maturity on both our parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just still solid? Sure, I mean... I do that little Sir Echo thing that you were talking about. That was not too bad. 
That was not too classy a joke, you know, but once in a while, well, sorry. Uh, you, 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 we have to appeal to everybody. <laughs> There are a lot of people out there who say, hey, more of that stuff. Yes, I understand. Uh, I understand. You've been married, you've never really... Well, you must I was have considered... married once. I know uh, that. I know that. About an hour and a half. I know. <laughs> did, is, I didn't did, like it. Did that episode um, sour you on the eventuality you might get married anyway? Yes, I would say it made me paranoid. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I thought, uh, well, I'd like to get married again, but I, I'd like to make a success of it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a very difficult thing to do. Well, then on it. No, no joking. I think that's the most difficult personal relationship in the entire world. It causes for a... Mm. It calls for a lot of tolerance and understanding and humor and uh, large, vast sums of money. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, you yeah. see, I shouldn't... I shouldn't... I shouldn't do that either. You get and your mind starts to go wacko. Yeah. Right? Well, I, I think about marriage a lot, but I just watch you and I stop thinking about it. <laughs> I'm your idol. Okay. You Somebody said you're writing... True, you're writing your autobiography? Yes, I'm writing... Uh, well, I figured it's time to... Uh, Set it straight. To write it straight, you know, mm. because there's been so much uh, stuff, you know, written about me that's not only not true, but uh, pretty cruel. So I thought I would write a book about myself, and I'd call it... Well, I've had three or four titles. Right. I was going to call it My Life in Art but there is no art in my life, so my life was a silly, art? it's a silly title, you know? And then I thought I'd like it to make money, so I thought maybe I'd call it uh, uh, Frank Sinatra's Life Story. <laughs> that's been done, yeah. But that's been done. That's right. So now, and because unauthorized biographies are making so much money, I thought I'd call it an unauthorized right, biography. By, by Bernie, yeah. But now I'm going to call it My Side. Yeah, this is my it. side to everything. Yeah, when's it coming out? Well, I don't know. I'm just uh, up to age 35 now. <laughs> See, I don't know whether you're writing this or not. I, I am writing I have this. no idea. I am writing this. And it's great fun. It's terrific fun. And you're in the book. Oh? Oh, you're, you're both in the book. Really? Oh, great. Yes. Well, who, who's in it more? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make any difference, but I mean... Well, there was... There was Sir a... Francis Drake or me, yeah. I mean... <laughs> There was a long boat ride I had. Yes. <laughs> it's in the book. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here and uh, what a what? No, we'll we'll do this first. We'll sure. do whatever. Uh, we're gonna be back. <laughs> Nick Sean is here. Well, I, have, I have nothing. You mentioned that any good driver, if a guy can drive a car well, he could do Cannonball 3, right? Absolutely. Somebody suggested the California driver's test to see, since you've been in all these pictures. When's the last time you took the California driver's exam? Well, you take it every five years. All right. Mm -hmm. So you took it some years ago. <laughs> yeah, five years ago. You want to try some of the questions? These are legitimate questions. Sure. Give it a shot. <laughs> Woof. They're really hard, actually. Well, come on, aren't they hard? Well, it's Thanks. all right here. You got you got This is multiple choice. Guy applauds when he wants me out of Cannonball That's 3. Right. No, That's no applause. Right. Yeah. A, pede a pedestrian has the right of way at the corner. A, only when the crosswalk a crosswalk is marked. B, whether or not a crosswalk is marked, only when traffic signals are working. Well, this is what do you mean? Don't yell these answers out, folks. I think it's let's make a deal or something. You know, I, I think in California. The pedestrian always has the right of way. Whether or not the crosswalk is marked at all. Uh, you know, I, I, you can actually be coming down in an elevator if you see somebody in an elevator right. <laughs> and you think he's going to cross the street. Absolutely. You have to stop. You have to stop. This is a, in Absolutely. New York, would they laugh at this? Oh, well, yeah. Get him, Harry. Uh, yeah. All right. When driving, mm -hmm. you should stay at least A, three quarters of a second behind the vehicle in front of you. B, one second behind the vehicle in front of you. C, two seconds behind the vehicle in front of you. Well, I always stay in front of the vehicle. <laughs> well, in case, in case he got in front of you. Couldn't happen. You don't know which one? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, maybe a, maybe your car could you don't know the You don't know the answer to that, do you? I'd you... say, I would say B. No. 
two seconds. That was my other choice. <laughs> All right. Prima facie, what does prima facie mean? That's a facelift. <laughs> Is that understood? On the face of things. On the face, On the of, face things. of things. Oh, I see. Yeah. Prima facie speed limit in a business district. Business Is district. 25 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, or 30 miles an hour? Well, I would say 25 miles an hour. You're right. You're right. Very good. <laughs> good. Well, you would do all right on this, right sure. away. Well, this is, this is one that a lot of people miss. Two vehicles are approaching from opposite directions on a narrow mountain grade. Ah. The right-of-way should be granted to the vehicle going uphill, the vehicle going downhill, or the, lar or the larger vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the larger vehicle, but uh, probably that's... the guy coming downhill. You're right. Yeah. No, no. The vehicle going uphill. Well, that's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's why you got the job. That's right. You passed. 75. Okay. Dick Sean will be here in a moment. Or a couple of minutes. So stay where you are. Okay, we're back. We're in a good mood tonight. Dick Sean is here. Uh, Dick Sean is one of those entertainers, comedians who doesn't follow in a. Uh, direct line at all. He does a lot of street. He can be very brilliant. Uh, his one-man show has won numerous awards. Dick will be performing this Sunday night at the Universal Amphitheater here in Hollywood. Will you welcome Dick Sean? Just around the corner, that's where I buy my fish. <laughs> I love jazz. God, I love jazz. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Carson for allowing me to do my act. I don't get much of an opportunity to do my act anymore. I've been concentrating in the legitimate theater and doing very well. Last year, I did four Broadway shows in 12 weeks. <laughs> But I'm doing a new one this winter. If you're in New York, please come to see it. It's never been done before. They're taking two former hits, combining them into one big musical. It's called Stop Virginia Woolf, I Wanna Get Off. <laughs> That's a joke. It's not the truth, that's a joke. I do not do jokes. Milton Berle does jokes. He is the best joke teller of them all. I like to deal in curiosity and asking questions, not answers. There are no answers, but a lot of questions. <laughs> answers are come about every 10 years. Science discovered new, oh, there's a new answer, but questions are always here. That's what I like to get into. To me, that's the real humor. At a recent seminar I attended, three members of the cloth discussing how did life begin? When does it really begin? Well, the minister stood up and said, I believe it begins at inception. The priest said, no, I believe it happens when the fetus is two months old. And the rabbi stood up and said, no, I believe life begins when the children leave home and the dog dies. <laughs> You see, I'm talking about questions. <laughs> the curiosity of the human brain. Look where it's gotten us. Anything that man can think of can be done. There's information floating around since the beginning of time, waiting for some form of intelligence to walk into it. That's why you have computers. There's so much information in the world today, there's no room left to write it down. So man devised computers. The computers broke down, they put on supercomputers. The supercomputers are overloaded, on and on. The only logic in America today comes from the computer. When I win a football game, the computer will tell you. When I open up a place of business, the computer will tell you. The only logic today is from the computer. Man's logic is, means nothing anymore. And maybe it's not too bad an idea. If you realize where the world has come today with man's logic, I say, let the machines take over. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it's very difficult to find things that are funny today. What used to be funny today is very dangerous. That's why the younger comics act crazy. 
When I started out as a comic, you had to have ideas. Comics today are like crazy. They match the times. They match the times. Pee Wee Herman is not the kind of man that you hire as a lawyer to represent you in a brain damage case. And the reason the comics act crazy is because everything has become dangerous. When I started out as a comic, you could do sex jokes. Now, dangerous. When I started out as a comic, you'd do drugs, drug jokes. It was funny, but now, no, no. Even more dangerous. Religious jokes used to be kind of sweet, but now it's getting very dangerous because America's being divided up. Evolution or creation. Some books are even being written, rewritten from science. God. When I was a kid, I believed there was a God. I believe that. I saw pictures. <laughs> to a child, the eye does not lie. Oh, and he had two beautiful children, Adam and Eve. Looked like Donnie and Marie Osmond. <laughs> Sweet kids. And they had two sons, Cain and Abel. And they looked like John DeLorean and Klaus von Bülow. <laughs> started the world. No, no, listen. Religion. The other side says, no, we were animals at the beginning. Man first walked around as an animal. we have to that today is Mick Jagger. <laughs> have you noticed that religion and sex are almost interplayed? Because sex reminds us that we are animals and religion reminds us to deny it. This can create tension called sexual repression, which happened from the beginning of time. In the Middle Ages, in the Middle Ages, on the Crusades, the men who went off to war for 400 years to recapture Jerusalem, when they left their wives to make sure they were pure, they were so repressed, they applied chastity belts. This is heavy leather. <laughs> Thick chastity belts, so when they came home from the battle, the wife would be pure. They had their own key, and they used the key. They would lock it and ride off into battle. But at legend had it, though, one day, one particular baron went to his caretaker and said, you take care of the key. <laughs> and I go off into battle. If anything happens to me, please give it to my wife. He drove off on his horse, maybe 100, 200 yards later. I forget, I gotta look this up. <laughs> He heard the caravan taker behind him yelling, Master! Master! Well, the, car the baron pulled his horse together and said, Hold it! What? What? What is wrong? And the caretaker said, You gave me the wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> Funny stuff. Not bad. Yeah, very good. What do you mean, not bad? I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm only kidding. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of that at the amphitheater. I have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, the amphitheater now, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a big size place. I know. Big size but place. But you must hurry because there are only 4,000 choice seats <laughs> left. <laughs> <laughs> and no twofers either. This place holds 6,300. Yeah. And they asked me, uh, 63,000? Yeah. No, 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 6,300. 6,300. Yeah, that's right. Like, forget. Numbers are so impossible for me. <laughs> uh, 6,300. Uh, and uh, I'm not a 6,300 draw. Oh. Well, no, 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 my kind of people, they have a small unit. People like them, that's it. A <laughs> oh, well, couple you, of members of the get band. You get yourself a big opening act. Oh, I have an opening act. Well, I'm right. trying something different. I'm having a basketball game 
uh, the opening act, and the place is big enough. I, this is true. And it's going to be between five little people. Yeah. We don't use the word that begins with an M because it's in bad taste. I see. <laughs> and I want to work. <laughs> the three, uh, the, with five of them playing a basketball game against five seven-foot black basketball players. <laughs> And the little guys have a little basket, and they dunk with yeah. the little ball. Yeah. And the big guys have the regular basket, and they play each other. They run through each other's legs and things. It's... I was sick and tired of the old shows with the jugglers and the, uh, the magicians. Of Remember course. from the Ed Sullivan show? That's all they had. America was infatuated with men who could saw women in half and, and guys who could throw uh, three of their balls up in the air. That's true. Well, incredible. True, true. Well, no more. So I don't understand you. Well, I'm also working with uh, uh, three singers. Three singers. Yeah, it's not like the show I did uh, here. And, uh, I'm working with Cat Adams, Ben Page, and Linda Hopkins. Well, you've got that. So yeah, they're each going to do a number in the middle of my thing. So it's going to be a little, uh, it's going to be fun. I like, to, uh, I like to do that. How long you got? Bert One told night. me you got lost in the parking lot today. Is it true? I was walking around. Before the show, I like to be alone. <laughs> I get a chance to really to think. There's a lot of pressure in this kind of thing. It isn't like a club date. I mean, <laughs> this is uh, something else. Didn't I? I'm working the world here. <laughs> and, uh, and, and since I am not the biggest draw in the world, so when you give me America, uh -huh. I appreciate that. Yes. Even though it's for very small money. <laughs> so, yes, it is. So you were walking around the park? Walking park. around, trying to gather my thoughts, because when people come up to you, they talk to you, there's a distraction. Absolutely. A person can only think of one thing at a time. Uh, I can't only, I can't think of two things. One thing, anything else kind of cuts the other in half. I'll think of it, but it'll be split, because I feel there's just so many things that a person can re remember. Right. And then when every time I learn a new thing, like a new phone number, something falls out. <laughs>